Hi, dreamers. Well, it's been another month of fully living off of my investment income, and I've been doing a lot of research lately and stock tests, and you'll see some evidence of that. You'll also see I've reduced my options plays this month due to some personal reasons, which I'll discuss at the end. But in any case, let's get to it. Today, I'll review the end of the month totals where I show you my dividend and options income. This month, I made over $15,500 in investment income. So let's take a look at the detail. Okay, so here in the spreadsheet, you can see in September, I made over $10,200 in dividend income, which compares to the almost $8,900 in June of 2024. And so in total, I made over $30,000 in Q3 of 2024. And so taking a look at the detail, you can see the majority came in week one with almost $4,000 and weeks four and five. All right, well, the month started off with $54 from PDI, which is a relatively new longer term position that I've started. And although it's got quite high expenses, I'm excited about the rebound of PDI because of the interest rates. And of course, getting a nice yield while I wait. So I got $54 from PDI. I got $38 from FTS, $52 from Visa, which I have 100 shares of in order to write options against, $142 from Devo, one of my favorite derivative ETFs in the beginning of the month, and some additional payments from Devo at the end, which you'll see in a moment. I got $832 from PTY, another $128 from FTS, in another account, over $2,600 from JepQ, which you know I have over $250,000 of, and is my number one position. I bought a very small position of TLT to look into it while I was researching, and I do think this is a safe, interesting play, as I start to add some bond funds back into the mix, because I anticipate those doing a little bit better now that the interest rates are on the decline. But ultimately, I'm not sure I'm going to be adding to or even keeping this as I see some other better opportunities on the horizon. Then I got $35 from XDTE, which I did a dedicated video on these weeklies, and then $8 from a small new position in NEAR, another bond fund that I'm testing out. And that brings us to week two. I just have a very small position in MetLife, which is a leftover from a much bigger position that got assigned. A buck from CVX, which helps me keep my eye on the oil prices and direction. I got $68 from iSpy, $8 from Lily, $30 from GPIQ, and $341 from GPIX which I also did a dedicated video on. I got $152 from Microsoft, another $44 from XDTE, that weekly fund, and $120 from Realty Income. In week three, I got $8 from APLE, $60 from Google, which I'm also using to write options against, $38 from Stag, $211 from Duke, which I'm also writing options against, $166 from Maine, $269 from MFC, another $46 from XDTE, and $5 from QDTE. And then here you'll see another experimental speculative play, $10 from YMAG, which just started a weekly payout. And then here you see a growing long-term position with FTEC, $22 from FTEC. I got $22 from UNH and $248 from FDVV a high quality, broader ETF that's a long-term play. The next two are a couple of sector-specific ETFs, which are more near-term plays, as these sectors I'm expecting to rebound. So I got $10 from XLV, a healthcare ETF, and $22 from XLU, a utilities-specific sector ETF. Then I got $18 from JQUA, which is another broader ETF that's pretty safe and is a long-term play for me. I got $898 from QQQI, $1,613 from SPYI, and $274 from IWMI. And all of these are the NEOS funds. And so in total, about $2,800 from the NEOS funds, which I've also done dedicated videos on, and are monthly payers. Then I got another $50 from the DTE funds, $8 from PFG, a long-term hold for me, another $9 from the weekly YMAG, and $12 from another new bond fund that I've rotated into. 
which takes us to week five. I just started a position in IAK, which I'm doing some research on. I got $2 from IWM, $103 from QDVO, which is a brand new product from Amplify, which is this, the same company who created Devo. And I love their approach on covered calls. So one of the things you're seeing here is that I'm doing a lot of outsourcing in terms of options management. And we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to the options side. I got $8 from IYW, $16 from SEHG, $9 from VUG, a very speculative play on KLIP because of the rotation that I see with China. I got $20 from SOXX, $22 from VBR, which is a rotation into the small cap play, $112 from SVAL, $145 from Pepsi, $154 from PSA, $237 from Avgo, another $400 from Devo, and then another $236 from Cash as I use it for my options play. All right, so let's take a look at my options. In September, I made $5,275, which is a lot less than the $10,000 I made in June, or even the $21,000 I made in April of this year. So what gives? Well, just like last month, the market has been up and down and really hard to read at times. And on the personal side, I have had a ton of distractions. First of all, there was a hurricane headed my way. And then second of all, I had a little bit of a health issue where I had to go back to the hospital at least three times and some other personal things like helping a parent. And guys, these are some of the life events that happen that you have no control over. And I don't know about you, but when I'm doing options, I really want to pay attention to the market. And when the market is every which way, it becomes a little bit harder to do the, the research necessary to make sure that you're making smart trades. So in total, I made 69 trades on only $100,000. I let 15 assign, 17 expired, and 33 I bought back early. And so part of the reason why the options income is so much smaller is I'm using less liquidity. I have done safer bets like on BRKB and Microsoft. I've done a lot less of the leveraged options like SPXL, TNA, and SOXL. But I did have time to make a couple of strategic bets that paid off. For example, MU and AMAT, which worked out pretty well. In addition to everyday covered calls, like on Pepsi, Visa, Avgo, Duke Energy, VNQ, and Google. And so for Q3, only $21,000 made from options income. But quite honestly, it did allow me to capture a lot of the capital gains increases because I was so careful on the covered calls. But on the flip side, I haven't lost anything in a pretty volatile time frame. So I'm hoping the last quarter of 2024, I'll have a little more time to spend on my option strategies and hopefully get back to about $10,000 a month. And so in terms of the cumulative investment income chart, you can see that as of September in 2022, I had $54,816 worth of dividends. And as of September in 2023 in the orange bar, I had $69,421 in terms of cumulative dividends. And so as of this year, 2024, I've made over $80,000 cumulatively in dividends. But as you know, I started doing options in 2023 in January. And so as of last year, I had made over $109,460. And then here we are all in, in the light green bar, 2024. And this is options plus dividends plus interest. I've made $184,793. And so once again, the strategy that I show in the strategy portfolio video is really working well. And although I've had astronomical expenses this year and a ton of personal distractions, this mix and this strategy is working incredibly well. And I'm still projecting that I'll be somewhere around $250,000 by the end of this year all in, which guys is incredible. So I'll leave you with this. I think I mentioned that I had a little bit of a health issue lately. And basically something came up on a, on a scan that has caused me to go back to the hospital several times. And so I thought I'd just end with a personal note, which is really twofold. 
The benefit and the payoff of having this level of passive income is that when something comes up in your life that you really need to focus on, like your health, you don't have to worry about the income. You don't have to worry about missing work. It's an amazing feeling to be able to just focus on your health or focus on what's important. And that's really one of the reasons why we are all trying to get to this level of financial freedom. But on the flip side, the other thing I wanted to say is that without your health, none of this wealth is worth anything. So go get those annual checks. Make sure you have adequate health coverage and that you're investing in your own personal wellness all along this journey. Because at the end of the day, when you get into a position where you can actually have the time and the money to enjoy life, you want to make sure that you'll be able to enjoy it. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this dividend income update. And if you want a richer real-time experience with me, you can always follow me on Instagram or X. And if you're doing your own research using Seeking Alpha, feel free to find the link below to subscribe if you want, no pressure. As always, I encourage you to do your own research, then implement and learn by putting it into practice. And as a reminder, I'm not a financial advisor, so keep in mind these videos are for entertainment and inspiration only. I'll see you on the flip side.